Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Uh, just making a quick video. Uh, just to say that according to the Word of God, there are no atheists. Alright? According to the Bible, the Holy Word of God, and the Bible is the Word of God, there are no atheists. Okay? So, Whenever these atheists tell you, I mean, the, the, the masters, these atheists are masters of twisting your mind and trying to get you to think the way they think, alright? What they, what they want, what they, what they say to you is this, they say, well, uh, if only you would show us the evidence we would believe. Now, the Bible and Christianity, uh, has evidences and, and is built on evidences that, you know, the life and death of of of, of Christ and his resurrection um, there are evidences for that uh, there are evidences for uh, the truths of Christianity um, but the Bible uh, is really also says that uh, the issue between the Christian and the and the so-called atheist, or the unbeliever, um, is not one of due to a lack of evidence, because the Bible teaches that the atheist or the unbeliever actually has the evidences and knows there is a God. So, in other words, there's no such thing from a biblical perspective as an atheist. Um, what atheism is, is, is a suppression of the truth. They know what the truth is. They know that there is a God, but they suppress that truth. One of the ways they suppress it is say, we won't believe unless you give us the evidence. And then what happens is, uh, you give them evidence and then they give you evidence and it's arguing backwards and forwards. But really they're just hiding and suppressing the fact that they do know God, but they just don't want to face God. They do know he's there, but they don't want to face him. And so they, they have a smoke screen, screen of just keep arguing with you about evidences when really they actually know there is a God, but they seek to suppress it, that truth of God, or the knowledge of God within them. And like I said, I'll just say it again, uh, it's like a dark cloud. Imagine well, a fog. Imagine um, about a hundred years ago, or it weren't even a hundred years ago, it wasn't long ago in, in England, um, 50 or 60 years ago, there would be smog coming over Manchester and London because of the factories and the chimneys and they would pump out the smoke, okay? And the smoke would go over the cities and choke the cities and, and, and would and, and, and the thick smoke would come and in a way the Bible is saying that that that, that you that unbelievers and an atheist uh, are in this f f fog this thick fog where they're spiritually blinded all right but even though they're spiritually blinded they know there are roads, they know there are houses in the smog, they know there's reality around them, they just know it, alright, and it's the same with God, people are blinded by sin, and, and, but at the same time they know that there is a God and they continually suppress that truth, alright, um, so let us just share a few words, it says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So the Bible is teaching that there is the wrath of that everybody is going to come under the wrath of God because they know what the truth is. They know what the truth is. But they suppress the truth. So these atheists who say, give me the evidence, if you give me the evidence I'll believe. They don't really want the evidence. They just want to argue with you for the sake of arguing. They're not really seeking the truth. Maybe one or two are, but the vast majority are just using it 
as a way of trying to escape the reality of the truth of God that they know and they're trying to suppress it. Um, one atheist on a TV program actually said that um, so some Christian apologist asked this atheist apologist and said uh, if I provided you with evidence for the resurrection what kind of evidence would it would convince you? And the atheist apology said on a, on a British radio, he said, even if you got the Roman soldiers who were with Jesus at the tomb, and you got and they signed an affidavit that they were with Jesus right for the beginning and the end, and and and, the, and then the resu the end of his death and then the resurrection, uh, and was with him all that time, and they signed an affidavit that they were there. Even then, the atheist said, the atheist apologist said, I wouldn't believe, alright? But then on the next breath, he, he starts arguing about evidences, but he contradicts himself. But the point is, that it's not about evidences. The, the atheist was actually honest there. Because no matter how much evidence you provide uh, to these atheists, at the end of the day, they don't really want to know about God. And deep down, they know there is a God, but they're seeking to suppress it. Okay, let's go on. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God hath shown it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. So, you know, that all these YouTube atheists that are pumping out their stuff on, on YouTube, uh, week in, week out, and all these atheists that are arguing under my videos, they know there's a God. They know in their heart of hearts there is a God. And they fight my videos because they're trying to fight their own conscience, because deep down they know that God exists. They know that. And uh, it's time, atheists, that you stop trying to hide behind this smoke screen. And, and it's time many people woke up and realize the delusion that these atheists have put in your mind. They've put in your mind that it's all about evidence, that if only they had the evidence they would believe. Now the Christian faith has good evidences, and we praise God and thank God for that. But the thing is, that even if you provided evidence to the atheist, they already knew who God, uh, they already knew God existed. They already knew what the truth was. The thing is, they were suppressing it, and when you bring the truth of Christ and who he is, they continue to suppress that truth. Because they don't want to face that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And they don't want to be exposed to the light so that their darkness would be exposed. So they suppress it. And that's why uh, they continually uh, bang on about evolution uh, and, and fight Christianity on this issue of evolution. Because it's their way of suppressing the truth. It's their way of suppressing their conscience. It's their way of, of pushing God out so they can go on and get on with their own wicked and sinful lives. Their way of trying to not have Christ being ruler over their lives. Um, these clever intellectuals who want to argue all the time with logical uh, pincer movements or whatever. Really, it's not about uh, them trying to uh, find God and seek God it's really the fact that they know that deep down they are sinners and they are convicted of that they know they are proud they know they are arrogant they know they are doing things they shouldn't be doing and they know that Christianity is true but they continue to fight against it and suppress it and my evidence uh, uh, funnily enough to prove that atheists know that the Christian faith is true, that they know that God exists, is why do they fight a God so vehemently? Why do they fight the Christian God, not any other God? If, they, if, there's this, if God's just the spaghetti God, a spaghetti monster or a flying teapot, as these atheists make these silly arguments, if God is like that, then why spend your time fighting such a God? You know, these atheists use arguments like, God's, your God's like a spaghetti flying monster, uh, just no proof and no evidence. Alright, oh, let, let's just say that's the case. Why are the atheists so fixated 
about this spaghetti flying monster god and trying to fight this spaghetti flying monster god. Why? There's no power in it, supposedly. So why don't you just get on you with your life and leave this spaghetti flying monster god that Christians believe in? This is one of their arguments that atheists use. Why not just get on with it and, and leave these Christians with their delusional spaghetti flying monster god that they can't prove, as it were? No, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, because they know that God isn't a spaghetti flying monster who hasn't got any evidence. They know that there is a living God, that God is real, that God created this world, that God has given them a conscience, and God has given them a way to live, and they know the right way to live. They know that God is all-powerful and holy and mighty and great. And they know that God has revealed himself in the Bible. And they know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And why they attack Christianity, why they bash Christianity, is because they know that God is not a spaghetti flying monster without any evidence but that God is almighty, is all powerful and he created this world and they will have to answer to him on judgment day and if they don't trust in him they know they will go to hell they know that deep down and so they will continue to fight and fight against Christianity because deep down they know it's a real God you don't fight spaghetti flying monsters you don't spend all your days fighting such a, a God, but you spend your days fighting the Christian God, the almighty, powerful God, because you know that he's real, and you know that your number's up, that if you do not repent, you will go to hell, and you will go to eternity, and be lost forever. And you know that deep down, and you know that Christ is the truth. You know that he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So I ask you, atheist, to stop suppressing the truth, to acknowledge you've already had the evidence, and to bow the knee and to trust in him. And I ask all Christians today not to be deluded by the atheist propaganda and their intellectual arrogance. They might be able to come up with clever arguments, but at the end of the day, you can be so clever, you become so stupid. And these people sometimes are so clever and they flash off their brilliant minds but at the end of the day they're showing themselves to be stupid because without God nothing else means anything whether it be science whether it be logic whether it be history whether it be whatever it is it doesn't mean anything unless you have God at the center of it giving it meaning and giving it purpose and so the atheists need to turn to God and they need to trust in him and they need to acknowledge their sin and they need to believe in Jesus Christ and they need to put their faith in him that's what they need to do and all Christians today need to be encouraged that you have the truth that this is the word of God that Jesus is the truth and you need to believe in that that it is the truth and you need to stand on it and be confident in your faith and not be discouraged by all the shenanigans of what these atheists keep pumping out on YouTube because at the end of the day, they have the evidence, but they are choosing to suppress it. And when they come to talk to you and argue with you, don't give them the right to say that they are objective and that they are seeking real evidence for Christianity when they are not telling you the truth. Don't give them that right, but you tell them to their face, you know there is a God and you know that this is the truth. Now turn and trust in Jesus. Turn and believe in him. For he is the only way, the truth and the life. And if you are truly seeking, you will find. If you open your heart to him, he will come into your life. And you know that there is good evidence for the Christian faith. But you choose to suppress it. In your pride, in your arrogance and in your desire to walk in the ways of darkness. Come to the light and believe in the light. For his name is Jesus. His name is Lord. In him is all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him is the truth. Thank you for listening and God bless you and take care.